So in this video, I'm going to show you um, one of the ways I cook from scratch. I cook from scratch a lot of different ways. <laughs> but um, what happened here this uh, today was my husband pulled out a chicken and, and defrosted it. And, you know, the chi chickens are small. They're just real small. And my thing is, is if I'm going to bother roasting a chicken, I might as well roast two. So I pulled out another chicken, and then I had one that was frozen and one that was thawed out. So in this video, we're going to talk about um, cooking a defrosted chicken as well as cooking a frozen chicken. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, what I do with the, the carcasses. Um, because I'm gonna make some bone broth out of them. So usually when I, um, actually all the time, when I get meat to cook, I use as much of it as I can, and that includes the bones too. Okay, so some real basic directions for cooking a roasted chicken and a roasted frozen chicken. <laughs> There's a little bit of a difference. You do need to have an internal meat thermometer because frozen chickens, um, don't cook the same way as a defrosted chicken. So what I did was I used a convection oven and I have, I, I am lucky, I have a regular conventional and then I have a convection oven too. I like to use the conven convection oven <laughs> for roasting chickens, but you can certainly use a conventional as well. But what I do is I preheat the oven to 400 degrees. I get my uh, chickens ready and I put the pans in the oven. In this case, with the uh, fresh and the, or the defrosted and the frozen chicken, I had them each in separate pans. And um, I cook them each uh, for the 15 minutes, and then I go ahead and reduce the heat to either 325 or 350, depending on how big the chicken is. I kind of tend to like uh, 350, and then. I roast them away <laughs> and occasionally I'll check the temperature. Uh, the defrosted chickens are usually, depending on the weight, they're usually ready after about an hour and 15 minutes. I start checking the temperature at about 45 minutes. You want that internal temperature to be 165 degrees. And <clears throat> with the frozen chicken, it's going to take about another extra 45 minutes to an hour to cook enough to get that internal temperature to be where it needs to be. So that's the difference between the two. So when I cooked these two chickens together, the defrosted chicken was ready a lot sooner than the frozen chicken, but the frozen chicken came out perfectly great. <laughs> All right, so today I thought I would show you how we use up uh, uh, chickens, or you could do this with a turkey, uh, or any kind of meat, really. But we're, we're going to use it from start to finish. <clears throat> so right now, um, I am removing the cooked meat from the carcass. I cooked two chickens this morning. They're quite small. They're about three and a half pounds apiece. And it was funny because we took one chicken out, and then um, realized we should have taken another one out. So one of the chickens got cooked frozen and one of them got cooked normal. And, and I'll talk about that um, in, a, in a blog post actually. But there's a way you can actually cook frozen chickens, believe it or not. And um, that's what I did. So one got cooked frozen, one got cooked normal. And now they're both done and cooled down. And I am taking the meat off because tonight for dinner, we are gonna have chicken soup, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the meat for that. Of course, you can also use the meat for chicken salad. You can use it in all kinds of different recipes. Um, but tonight we're going to have soup because it's cold. <laughs> so soup is delicious when it's cold. Uh, what I'm doing with the bones, and if, uh, if these hadn't come from a lady down the street, she actually um, processed these for us. Uh, I, I like to actually leave the feet on, not when I'm cooking them, but I take them off and I use that in the bone broth too. But I'm putting the scraps over here um, to go in the bone broth. So all of the bones from both of these chickens, every single bit of skin um, and anything extra is going to go in the bone broth. And I will show you how to do that in just a moment too. All right, so we've gotten the meat off of the 
two chickens. We probably got about six cups of meat there. This is a pretty big pot. And now I, I actually threw vegetables in the bottom of the chicken pan because the moistness rises up and it helps keep the chicken nice and moist. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add these vegetables now to the soup pot. And I'm right now defrosting some bone broth I had made earlier. And what basically this soup is going to end up being is chicken vegetable um, with some bone broth and spices. So it's going to be a nice, tasty, warm soup for us this evening. <clears throat> and right now I'm just getting it ready. Over here, what I have, these are the bones from the two little chickens. Uh, that we cooked and these bones are going to go into the stock pot where I'm going to make some bone broth. Yeah. All right, so here I've got two pans. This pan here contains the meat from the chickens as well as the vegetables that were in the pans. And I'm just going to set this aside and in about three hours I'll go ahead and make dinner and make the soup from this. It's going to take, oh, maybe uh, 10 to 20 minutes to make this soup because everything's cooked already. I'm just going to have to add my bone broth here, uh, which <clears throat> basically I'm just going to add the bone broth and then bring the soup to a nice boil and let the flavors mix for about 20 minutes. It's going to be so delicious. So this is actually some bone broth that I made uh, a few weeks ago from an elk that uh, Mr. V uh, was able to get, which is amazing and awesome. And this is the bone broth that's going to go into the soup. So that's what I'm going to make the soup with. So over here in this uh, stock pot, what I have is the carcasses of the two chickens. <clears throat> all cleaned off along with the skin basically all the parts if I had the feet I'd be putting them in here too but I don't have the feet from these chickens and I went ahead and just covered them with about uh, two inches three inches of water and I'm going to go ahead and start some bone broth now the way I do my bone broth is I'll go ahead and put my um, bones and carcass uh, materials into the pot and then I add usually about a quarter cup to, of white vinegar to maybe a half a cup depending on how full I've got the pot and I put a lid on it <clears throat> and then I let it simmer on low for about two days and after that time period you what you end up with is a really thick delicious bone broth that you strain off and it's almost like jelly so I'll go ahead and link to the um, blog post on how I do that too. There's some pictures and directions in there. Okay. All right, so yesterday um, we started the chickens. We roasted the chickens in the oven or baked them. And I made soup with the meat and the vegetables that were in the, the, the pan. And here's the bone broth. So. What is in here is the are the two carcasses of the chicken and water and some vinegar and spices. And a lot of times I'll put herbs in here too, like astragalus or burdock root or dandelion root, um, herbs that are really helpful for your, your health and your liver. Um, toward the end of it, I'll even put in nettle, um, you know, herbs that will break down in the water um, and give a lot of mineral and minerals and vitamins. <clears throat> so this has been going for about 24 hours. I've just been adding water as needed and keeping it a, at, at a low simmer. And I'm going to let it go one more day, okay? Yeah, some people who do bone broth, they uh, will only let it go for maybe eight to 12 hours. Um, and some people let it go 24 hours and then some people let it go longer. I'm one of the, the longer people. I like to let my bone broth go uh, a long time because that way the bones can really break down. And you can tell when you've got a nice broth because um, the bones after uh, a day or two or three, <laughs> I've actually let it go as long as four days, but um, they crumble. They crumble, and so you're getting all of the minerals from the bones, and it's just really, really uh, healthy and, and good for you. So I will show you what I do when I go to strain it out, and uh, that's going to happen um, tomorrow. 
Okay, I, I, I'm back now and I wanted to show you um, what I do with the chicken broth. So we've actually used um, probably a couple of quarts of this broth so far, but this is the chicken broth. Um, I let it simmer, like I told you, for a couple of days and um, I let it cool down completely and then I put it in the refrigerator. And the reason I do that is because the fat will float to the top and then when I'm pouring it into my um, containers to store, uh, the fat kind of disperses a little bit better, I've noticed. Also, if I'm making a broth like this elk broth right here that I just made, sometimes uh, the fat will float to the surface. It's It actually is a natural way to render fat and I can go ahead and use that fat to make soap. So next steps in making bone broth after this, um, basically I'll get a strainer. I strain the bone broth uh, into a bowl or a Pyrex pitcher that has a lip. And I'm not going to go through this whole process right now with you. I just, I'm going to explain it. Um, and I'm going to give you two ways to store it. Um, but what I'll do at that point is take the liquid that's in the Pyrex uh, pitcher that's been strained off. Usually it's really nice liquid. And I store it either in gallon bags, as you can see here. This gallon bag is two quarts of broth. That's a lot. Usually I'll uh, store, well, one to two quarts. It depends. Um, and then I'll freeze it in um, the bags. Or the other thing I'll do is I'll use a, a straight-sided pint jar. Um, the mason jars, can, you can actually freeze, and I like to freeze these uh, and have a bunch in there uh, because it's really helpful. And um, any of the straight-sided jars that don't have a shoulder, you can freeze. <laughs> so that's just good information to know. Uh, also, then you can can in these as well. You can also use the uh, regular quart size mason jars and you can can in those too if you have a pressure canner. Um, I don't actually pressure can a lot of broth. I, I t We use a lot of broth, so I just tend to freeze it. But, um, but you certainly can can it and I know a lot of people who do. And basically, those are, that's how what we're, I'm going to do with this broth and I'll have it ready for recipes. One last thing I want to point out too, and again, this is what's left. We ended up with, uh, oh, probably a couple gallons of broth from these chickens, but um, these leftover bones, they don't go to waste either. Uh, we actually take the, the very dregs of the broth and we take it back out to the chickens and they eat it up and these bones are so soft that they just, uh, they'll just crumble. Oops, <laughs> see that? That was actually a, a leg and it just, you know, you can snap it apart with one hand. So anyway, um, nothing goes to waste around here.